as you know, our spag focus this week is apostrophes. Yesterday we looked at apostrophes for contractions and today we're looking at apostrophes for possession. So what does the word possession mean? Let's put our vocabulary ninja hats on and have a think. What is a possession? A possession is something that you own, something that belongs to you. So your coat is a possession, your toys, your Lego, those are possessions also. So a possession is something that belongs to you. So an apostrophe for possession is going to show that something belongs to somebody or to a group of people. Let's take a look. The bird's beak is yellow. Who does the beak belong to? The beak belongs to the bird. So we're going to put an apostrophe before the S on birds. The bird's beak is yellow. We're looking at one bird, his beak is yellow. Let's look at the next sentence. Edward's Lego Tower was the tallest. First question, why is Edward and Lego both capitalised? Edward and Lego are both proper nouns. Lego is a particular name of a brand, so it's given a capital letter, it's a proper noun. Let's go back to the sentence. Edward's Lego Tower was the tallest. Who does the Lego Tower belong to? It belongs to Edward. So the apostrophe goes before the S. Edward's Lego Tower was the tallest. Next sentence. Miss Lemon's cat is called Meadow. You might see her sneaking past in a couple of the videos. She's currently just on the sofa behind me. So Miss Lemon's cat is called Meadow. Who does the cat belong to? Belongs to me, Miss Linen. So the apostrophe goes for the F. Miss Linen's cat. The boy's coat was hanging on the peg. Now because it's only one peg and one coat, I am assuming it is one boy. It is that boy's coat. So the apostrophe is going to go between the Y and the S. The boy's coat was hanging on the peg. The next sentence is very similar. The boy's coats were hanging on the pegs. Because there's lots of pegs and lots of coats, there must be lots of boys. This is where our pattern changes slightly and the apostrophe is going to go after the S. So that's the group of boys. The coats belonged to the group of boys. The next one, the children's ball went over the fence. If we reverse that, the ball, belongs to the children. Children does not have an S on the end, so we need to add the apostrophe and the S. If we look back at the previous sentence, the boys' coats were hanging on the pegs. The coats belong to the boys. You can already hear that S, and that is why the apostrophe goes after the S. We're not having to add that S at the same time as the apostrophe. It's already there, and therefore the apostrophe goes at the end. This sentence, we are having to add that S. The ball belongs to the children, so we need to add the apostrophe and the S. The children's ball went over the fence. The next one, the houses windows sparkled in the sun. The windows belong to the houses. You can hear it's already got an S on the end. So where do we put that apostrophe? Have a think for a second. That's right, because we can hear the S on the word already, we don't need to add an S and the apostrophe just sits after the S. The house's windows sparkled in the sun. So remember, if you're not sure where the apostrophe goes, reword the sentence so that you can create a much simpler sentence saying that the object thing belongs to something. So let's go through it again very quickly. The beak belongs to the bird. The bird does not end in an S. So we add apostrophe S. The Lego belongs to Edward. Edward does not end in an S, so we add an apostrophe and an S. The cat belongs to Miss Linen. Miss Linen does not end in an S, so we add apostrophe S. The coat belongs to the boy. Boy does not end in an S, so we add apostrophe S. The coats belong to the boys. Boys does end in an S. We do not need to add an S, we just put the apostrophe after the existing S. 
yes, it is already there. The ball belongs to the children. Children does not end in an S, so we put apostrophe S. And the windows belong to the houses. Houses ends in an S, so we just need to add our apostrophe. And that's a quick rundown on apostrophes for possession. So there are two ways to access today's home learning activity. The first is on Seesaw, the new platform that we are using. If you're not signed up to this yet, check back on Dojo for a video that I posted yesterday. If you are signed up, log in as you did yesterday and the new home learning activity will be there and ready and waiting for you. Complete it and hit submit. You don't need to do anything else. Um, if you're not signed up to Seesaw yet, the activity is also at the end of this video as a photo. So if you just pause the video, you'll be able to copy that into your home learning book, photograph it as you've been doing before and upload to your Dojo portfolio. I hope that all makes sense. As always, any questions, please send me a Dojo message or if you're using Seesaw, you can comment on the, directly onto the Seesaw activity. I am in school today on the rotor, so I may take a bit longer getting back to you, but I will get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day.